Greetings to you all, my people, and welcome to another episode of Damole News. All right, my people. So, a member of the Northern Elders Forum, Professor Usma Yusuf, has slammed the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Tinibu. According to him, he said it has turned to hopelessness. So, Usma Yusuf, a former executive secretary of the National Health Insurance Scheme, made this statement in an interview with Channel's television, Sunday Politics. According to him, he said, rather than inject the Nigeria people with some hope of capsules, the tenable led government had made Nigerians more hopeless in the last one year. Also, Professor Usma Yusuf described the economic management team of the president as tax collectors rather than economists. Now, this is coming after Tinibu government mandated that all users of the federal airport across the country must start paying tolls at airport gates. And also, Professor Usma Yusuf also blamed our leaders and our governors, saying that largely 80% of our problems are created by them. All right, I'm going to let you guys listen to the words of Professor Usma Yusuf, but before then, please help us to subscribe to this YouTube channel, like and share this video so that YouTube and Facebook can recommend it to more people. Thank you. I want in the last one year, for and from next week they will start telling us their, their propaganda. What have they done that has benefited the ordinary person? What have they done? In a span of one year, they have made millions more people back into multidimensional poverty. They have pushed millions more children into out of school because parents cannot pay for their school fees. They have put many more people hungry in one year. So what have you done? What have you done? I want government to tell us, don't give me the story about, oh, they're just floating the dollar, the, the dollar. It's all another deception. You increase the taxes, you hike the interest rate, and you borrow money, thinking you'll prop the, the, the Naira artificially. And you keep taxing everybody. This is exactly what he did, what the president did in Lagos. Tax, 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 tax. And, and the, the economic team, to me, honestly, look more like tax collectors than economists. Taxation does not grow economies. Only production does. They seem out of, oh. they, 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 they out of their, their depth, to be honest. The common man does not see the way out. The last year has been a year of nothing but deception, destitution, and hopelessness. So in the North, if I'm the president or if I'm the governor in any state, we are richer than the South. In what sense? In many ways. Three things. The North, agriculture, if, we, if we, we concentrate on three things, agriculture, solid minerals, and solar, we'll be done. All the water, all the hydroelectric power stations are from the North. Mambila, the North is complaining, there's no power. When Man, Mambila, Mambila is, isn't, nothing is happening. Yeah. There are a lot of lamentation. Yeah, who was happening. there? Who was there before? If we had developed Mambila, we wouldn't be in this mess. The North is richer than the South. We need uh, uh, in terms of agriculture. Deposit, on top deposit. Absolutely. We have the land for agriculture. We can feed not only Nigeria, but the whole of West Africa. Secure our people, let them go back to the farm. Number two, and do not abandon uh, agriculture and go and run after this, this oil that is fluctuating all over the place. Solid minerals. We have it all. Why is the fight in Zamfaran all over this northwestern state? Because of gold. Largely. Yeah, a lot of it. And then previously in the last government, the National Security Advisor will come and say, oh, mining has been banned, no fly zone, no follow-up. Thirdly, and people should ask, where has been the gold of Zamfara? Where is the gold? We have the sun. We can power not only the region, but we can power the whole of the country. Whatever, all the governors largely, I mean, look, we look at the president more than we look at the governors. To be honest with you, largely 80% uh, of our problems are the governors. Corruption and bad governance, I've said it again and again and again and again. We've had leaders in this country that we have benefited from. And all of these governors, all of these ministers have benefited from the good governance of our leaders past. All of them. 
in the First and Second Republic. Absolutely. They were good custodians of that which they were entrusted with. What, where, where, what went wrong? Where did we start okay. to get it wrong? They were good custodians. They trained us. They, they, they did not accumulate. But now everybody else, the governor wants to not only accumulate, but leaves the state treasury empty. Not only that, indebted. So the goal, the, the primary thing is corruption and bad governance. Corruption and bad governance. It's everywhere. It's only more pronounced here because of the insecurity. It's going to bite us. And I've been saying it again and again, again and again. How many governors... How many ministers, how many service chiefs can retire and go back home and stay? Like those leaders of our time used to do. They used to go back home and stay with their people. Shagari used to went back home and stayed with his people. How many of these governors, these service chiefs, these ministers will go back home? Ancestral home. All IDPs in Abuja. Because of bad governance. And I'm telling you, to be honest, the, the ordinary citizen has given up. He has given up. On the politicians. On the politicians. You go to... There is a report by the American Society or Nigerian Society of Hypertension. The, the, the hypertension. Doctors that take care of people who have hypertension. Of the 70 million Nigerian adults that have hypertension, half of them, that's 35 million are not on medication because of the skyrocketing cost of medications. They've stopped taking their medications. That's why we see a lot of complications from hypertension, strokes, heart disease, uh, renal failure. People die. People don't go to hospital because they cannot afford it. It's not the soldier that does this. What is the price of a loaf of bread now? Family loaf in Abuja, 1,200, 1,300. You go to many villages. You bring out a thousand naira, Allah, nobody can give you change. That's how poor people are. Yet our leaders are here, they are disconnected from realities of our people. We've seen how the other time members of the Senate are saying, oh, this one got 500 million, this one got 200 million. They are disconnected from realities of our people. People have given up on them. There is nothing a politician from top, from local government to the president, I will tell the people that they will believe him now. This is the honest truth. They've lost faith. They've lost faith on our politicians with good reasons too. Because all deception, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, nothing happens. Look at this. I mean, on the 8th of February, Mr. President gave an order, a directive, that 42,000 metric tons of grains should be taken out of strategic game, uh, reserve silos and given to, to, to vulnerables. Today is four months. Which vulnerable Nigeria has gotten this? If a one governor, one northern governor even declared five working days we are going to distribute this, this, this palliatives, nothing happened. What really angers me, 64 years after independence, we are still distributing grains to people. Just like you see in the Sudan or in, or in Gaza, in a country of plenty. In a country where we're building, the president is building a highway from Lagos to Calabar of 15.6 trillion. That is 56% of the 2024 budget. People are lining up to get cups of grains from the governors. All the windfall the governors get, they go back home, they give people grains, cups of grains, women and children to shut them up while they continue. And you expect peace? Can never be peace in a country like this. So my people, that is it for you all. I saw this news and I decided to share it with you guys. So please let me know your opinion in the comment section. And please help us to like and share this video so that YouTube and Facebook can recommend it to more people. Thank you so much for your time and God bless you. Amen.